Our next storyteller is Ms. Gail Haynes. Gail has been a member of AWA since 2015. She creates poems that are soulful and sassy, poems that will make you laugh and also reflect on real life experiences. Among the sites where she has read are Mount Zion Baptist Church, Elliott Bay Book Company, Columbia and Ballard Library, and Life Enrichment Bookstore. Gail shares her poems at nonprofit organizations that stand against injustice. Many of her poems exalt the goodness of the Lord and his amazing power of love to transform lives. Soulful and Sassy Reflections and Poems is the author's first book, Ms. Gail's first book. Her advice appears in the facts in the column, Be Well with Gail. Ms. Gail. Hello, everybody. I decided to write a story of some, someone that you could count on to never be prejudiced against you. Someone that will give you unconditional love. You know who I wrote about? My dog. <laughs> so <clears throat> the title of this story is Mrs. Puddles Lucille, A True Story, A Fluffy, Feisty, Fiery Dog. I just wanted to read about this because I think sometimes, you know, I... I write about black history and things in it, and I just want to kind of have a mixture in there. Um, so here it goes. And thank you for being an audience. Puddle's mom had a litter of five puppies. Puddle's was the runt and smallest of all of them. My aunt Shirley Ann sold her to me for only $50 when she was six weeks old and literally six inches long. She slept in my daughter's K-Swiss shoebox. Remember those shoes? Uh, she had a face, face towel for her blanket. She had curly cream colored hair, big ears that stood straight up. She was a mixture between a toy poodle and a Karen Terrier. Puddles was my dream come true. All my life, I wanted a dog since I was a child. But because my brother and I had asthma, my mother refused to allow it. Plus, she didn't like them anyway. She didn't like no dog. We had two parakeets, one named uh, Pookie and the other one Vicky, and loads of guppies. Puddles did some crazy things. She loved to lick walls. Some dogs will lick you in the face, but she loved to lick walls. I assumed. They tasted good. She would drag her little tongue clear across the wall until she literally wore herself out. After that, she would drink loads of water. Every spring, the neighbor's tree dropped green figs in our yard. Puddles would eat one or two figs a week and always threw up all the time. I asked the neighbors to cut back the branches that hung in my yard. Um, maybe she was doing her own inner cleansing. I don't know. It's hard to know. In spite of her peculiar little ways, everyone in the neighborhood loved her. When we would go on walks, people would speak to her before they even acknowledged me as if, they, if, as if she was able to talk back. However, because of her feisty personality, she never went up to people wagging her tail or allowed them to pet or even pick her up. People would say she was sometimes. She would literally have a hissy fit when we gave her a bath. She could not stand getting water in her eyes until I went to the dollar store and bought a pair of goggles that calmed her down. Now, I can't find that picture with her with her goggles on, but I have it somewhere. Even though she grew to eight pounds and 12 inches full grown, she was not a dog to be reckoned with. She was fearless and carried confidence as a little dog. One hot summer day, a huge raccoon wandered in the backyard looking to snack on some of Puddle's dog food and drink her water. Puddles went into high mania and began running and barking like crazy, chasing that raccoon around and around the yard until it jumped the fence, escaping her mighty power. I was sweating, thinking what could have happened if that just raccoon decided to turn around and fight back. She just 
was proudly wagging her little tail as she ran over to the cabin where we kept the dog biscuits waiting for her. And I gave her one because she sure was courageous. I was not able to, st I wouldn't have been able to run out there between her and a raccoon. Thank God the raccoon decided not to fight her and, and use her as his snack. Another time, Puddles came in from the yard with a thick black string hanging out of her mouth. As my daughter Talea looked closer, she noticed it was a mouse tail. She had the mouse in her mouth and the string was hanging out. Talea busted, ran, and then Puddles dropped the mouse and began to run with her, and they both ran up the stairs. Talea washed her mouth by with ivory soap that night. When we weren't looking, she was busy outside digging holes in the backyard. Can you picture her big ears flapping up and down in the wind as she was wildly digging holes and tearing up the yard? However, on that day, her digging passion came to an end when she fell in one of her hole, holes and dislocated her back leg. The vet diagnosed and x-rayed the leg and quoted me $2,000 to reset her leg. I thanked him and we left. Puddles walking crooked on three legs and me telling myself there's no way in the world I could have that kind of money to pay for no dog that I paid $50 for. I called other vets and they said the same price and even more. The next week, Puddles and I caught the bus downtown to Pioneer Square because I heard there was a vet that would come down there once a month and treat dogs and cats for people who were homeless or didn't have much money. Now, I wasn't homeless, but I, <laughs> I got in a line with them anyway. And so when we got up to the front, the, the, the vet said, oh no, we can't do no surgeries for free. We will give rabies shots and vaccines, but absolutely no surgeries for free. So again, we left getting on the bus Puddles walking crooked on three legs and me wondering what to do next. Just then I remembered the year before when my right eye had become red and swollen. The doctor gave me a hard look and offered me a pamphlet on domestic violence after he had the nerve to ask me if someone punched me in the eye. I said, no, sir, that did not happen. I got an attitude and I just couldn't believe he would say that. After the exam, he discovered I had scleritis, a serious eye in inflammation that could cause blindness if left untreated. He, just, he prescribed steroids that didn't really help me that much or even clear up my eye. And I was taking them for more than two weeks. I wore sunglasses every day because I figured somebody was gonna assume that somebody hit me in the eye. Well, a friend of mine, she invited me to go to church for a healing service. The preacher said, if there's anyone in the congregation who needed healing, quickly stand up. With faith, I stood up, he prayed, and I kid you not, within 72 hours, that eye cleared up. It was blood red, it was swollen, and in 72 hours, all the pain left. So I really realized God does answer prayer. So you know what I did? I got me some prayer oil, rubbed it together in my hands and laid it on that leg. And my daughter held Puddle's uh, head because every time someone tried to touch that leg, she would haul off and try to bite them. So let me tell you what happened. In four weeks, four weeks, that leg, that back leg dropped down and that dog was running faster than she ever did before. That lets you know God answers prayer, even if it's a dog. And you know what? She never dug one more hole after that. Not one more. Okay, so in the neighborhood lived a cat. This cat was tease Puddles every day, walking on top of the fence. And Puddles was so small, you know, being a toy poodle, she could not get a hold of that 
of that dog. I mean, that cat. She was always barking, running back and forth as the cat just slowly walked on the fence. But one day, everything changed. Huddles was sitting on the back of the couch, looking out the window, and she spotted the cat across the street. As, at the same time, the doorbell rang. I opened up the door and Puddles shot out the door. Fast as lightning speed, we were chasing after that cat. They was going around and around, all up in the street. This was so wild. I'm screaming, Puddles, come back. And she's wildly barking and the cat was running. Suddenly, a small truck turned the same corner, hitting Puddles, breaking both of her legs. The driver jumped out the truck, broke down and cried. He said the same thing happened to his dog when he was a child. Puddles laid in the street crying while the cat sat down next to her and watched her. I scooped her up, still alive, barely breathing, and rushed her to the nearest vet. My thought was she could use a, one of those doggy scooters, you know, for the back legs and run around like that. But after examining her, the vet said not only were her legs crushed, but her stomach. That day, my daughter and I watched Miss Puddles Lucille take her last breath. She was only three years old. Life at home was never the same after that. The neighbors were shocked and saddened. My sister Linda put flowers on the sidewalk and a picture of Puddles on the corner. Even my mom cried and she never liked dogs. But she loved Puddles. That funny little crazy dog who brought so much joy and laughter to everyone around her was gone. And you know what? We didn't see that cat no more after that. It just disappeared. That's the end. <laughs>